Okay. How about now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's looking better. Uh, thanks. Okay. So, uh, I'd just like to say hello. Um, thanks for taking the time to do this. Uh, before we start, yeah. uh, we are not here to ridicule you for anything. It's, uh, it's okay. To... You, you don't Pardon. have to worry about it. All right, all right. Yeah, we just want to hear your story, your perspective sure. on this whole flat Earth issue. So. Additionally, it would be really helpful if you could try to answer all of our questions in complete sentences. Sure. That would help with the editing process. All right, sure. great. Do you want me to repeat your question as well? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I guess just let us know when you're ready for us to start recording. Let us do. Okay. And so I'll, I'll record the audio on my side, just so you have the audio as well. It may help. Well, that will help a lot. All right. Thanks. So, uh, I'm just gonna start off with some questions we have to ask for legal reasons okay. so please state your name and spell it sure my name is mark Sargent, s-a-r-g-e-n-t all right thanks uh do you give us permission to record and distribute your likeness yes i do you can use my likeness for anything you want all right thanks so how do you identify yourself give us a little bit of your story Identify myself. So just kind of what I'm doing right now. I am the freshman recruiter for a metaphorical university called Flat Earth. Uh, that's okay. what I do. It's what I've been doing for the last four years since 20, beginning of 2015. Uh, I work mostly on YouTube and social media. I go to conferences, I do interviews, I do some activism, and I basically talk to people all the time about Flat Earth. All right. Uh, so how would you describe the Flat Earth Society and what it stands for? Okay. The Flat Earth Society, just so you know, is the old version of Flat Earth. Uh, we'll use a software term. So if the Flat Earth Society is version 1.0, we would be version 2.0. Uh, the old society, that's just the old guard. They've been doing their thing for a long, long time. And then when social media, especially in the United States, took off, that's when we took over. And so we don't have any official association with the Flat Earth Society. We do conferences and we do meetups and we do hangups, hangouts, and nobody from that society is part of our group. Uh, they are just, you know, the old the old guard that don't doesn't do anything anymore. Uh, the new version, which is what we are, we exist almost primarily on social media, uh, almost exclusively on YouTube because YouTube is now the largest television network in the world for better or for worse and the every once in a while however though we we did kind of break out of that when we did the uh, behind the curve documentary which you guys i think probably watched yes uh all right thanks for that so yeah. for the next question i guess what led you to believe in or discover the idea of the flat earth i first got into the flat earth in 2014 when I was looking around YouTube, and it's kind of the old joke, which was I thought I finished uh, YouTube, basically. I had gone through just about everything you could think of and every conspiracy you could think of, and I, I had my opinion on it, just about every conspiracy. Then, And everybody knows about Flat Earth. We've all heard it since we were kids. We all hate it. It's a terrible, awful thing. I hated it, too. Nobody that gets into Flat Earth loves it. And I thought, okay, well, I've done everything else. Might as well look into this. And tried to debunk it in a weekend worst mistake of my life to where nine months later i'm sitting there in front of my machine just banging my head on the on the keyboard going it can't be it can't be and it's like you know what i'm gonna go the other way and i'm going to create a series of videos called flat earth clues and put it out to the internet hive mind that i can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore can't can't do it because you know it's not what you know it's what you can prove and i can't do that anymore and thought that some academic from some university, which is why I put my email and my phone number out everywhere, would contact me, and they didn't. In fact, the opposite. People just started calling me and saying, wow, this is a really interesting idea. Can we talk about this? And people from the media and subject matter experts, and it was really, really cool. So that's, that was four years ago. All right. Um, I see you. Who are you? Who are you back there uh, in the red? Uh, Hi. Yeah, it's just someone working on the filming okay. with us. So. I hope you guys do well with it. It'd, it'd be awesome. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, that was a good amount of backstory. And 
so something you mentioned was the sort of public image of Flat Earth, and we'd like to discuss that a little. So obviously there's a lot of stereotypes and internet jokes about people who believe the Earth is flat, and that leaves a lot of people feeling somewhat closeted about their perspective. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you obviously aren't like that, so no. we're curious as to why you don't feel that way. Uh, why am I out of the closet, so to speak? Uh, and 90% of the Flat Earth community is in the closet, which is really interesting. It's not like other communities where out and in is you know half and half. Uh, the reason why most people, let's start with the reason why most people are in the closet. It's mostly out of uh, peer pressure more than anything. And you guys know, being in high school, you know what peer pressure is about. And they, you know, from friends and family and coworkers, they're afraid of what might happen to them if they talk about it. And I have, I get emails every hour, not just every day, every freaking hour from people that say, uh, oh yeah, I, I'm totally with you. Can't talk about it. If you want to read my email on air, you can, that's great. Uh, for me, peer pressure was never really a thing. I don't know why. I think it was actually because of my father. He was always one of those. It's like, dad, do what you want. You know, don't, don't let him, don't let him try to sway you. And I had a best friend whose name was, um, uh, Michael Bunker. And he was an interesting guy. He was always a trailblazer. And I loved the fact that he, he honestly didn't care if he thought it was cool. It was, it was something you wanted to do. And so it's like, yeah, you know what? If you have conviction in something, why not? You know, the, and when that happens, the rest is easy, which is I have a lot of conviction in Flat Earth. So, yeah, you know, there's YouTube comments and every once in a while the occasional email and phone call. But trolls, Internet trolls do not bother me at all. Uh, and but to, to be fair, it was easier for me because I never got married and never had kids. So if you don't have those two things, you can that that saves you a lot of pain and suffering. Uh, because there's a lot of people that are married uh, that you know their spouse does not believe in it, and that makes it very very difficult for them. So for me, I, I some of the obstacles were removed for me, and then the rest was just conviction. That's it. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess if you believe in the flat Earth, there's obviously a reason why you believe in it. Right. So like, what is the idea of flat Earth based on? Uh, what's the reasoning behind it the, for you? The biggest reasoning, and I think a lot of people would say this in Flat Earth, is that you what is what's happened is the Flat Earth has eroded away the confidence in the globe. So remember what I said a little bit earlier, where it's like, could, could I prove to you right now that the Earth is flat? No, absolutely not. If I could, I'd be on the cover of Time magazine. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is the flat earth or some version of it which is why the flat earth community keeps growing because you know the flat earth community has all sorts of different opinions on exactly what the shape is and you know different elevations and how energy works and the different physics but at the end of the day they all agree in one thing that it's not a globe spinning you know at five different directions in, in space in this endless vacuum of space so for me uh little things and I, I, I don't know if you want to do follow-up questions on this or not um, the five major points that I throw at academia when it comes to flat earth, one would be long distance photography, which is eventually that object has to be behind the curve at a certain distance. If the curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile per mile or eight, eight inches per mile squared, you, once it gets to a certain distance, you will not be able to see it. It is on the other side of the curve. It is on the other side of the hill. That is not the case. We see it all the time. Uh, what's changed in the last 10 years has been HD digital zoom. We can, we can pull things into frame all day long. Uh, second thing would be the gravity, uh, the force of gravity versus uh, the vacuum of space. Who wins? Uh, look, pressure needs a container, and the, the, the Earth defies the second law of thermodynamics, which, where's the beep coming from? Uh, yeah, I think that was on my end. Oh, Sorry. no worries, no worries. The, um, the, the globe and the atmosphere defies the second law of thermodynamics. The vacuum of space should rip the atmosphere off the earth violently and that doesn't does not happen we do not see that uh third would be the eclipse shadow which is uh, if the moon mainstream science says it says it's 2,000 miles wide and it only casts a shadow that's 70 miles wide and say okay what's the point well if you reverse that and the earth is in front of the sun then it should cast a blackout zone on the moon that's about 250 miles and we never see it we just see a blood red moon with this wonderful circle going over it uh, fourth would be moon temperature 
which somebody anybody can test, which is fascinating, and that is the moonlight is cold, meaning it generates a refrigerant light like a blue laser, which we could do in universities, meaning uh, if it's 90 degrees in the sunlight, it's 80 degrees in the sun shade. But when you're in the moon, it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, and it's 60 degrees in the moon shade, which is the exact opposite. That defies physics as we know it shouldn't be happening. And does that prove a flat Earth? No, but it absolutely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon. And last but not least would be the Van Allen radiation trap question, which is, and I've asked astronauts this, which is, are the Van Allen belts uh, announced by NASA in 1959, are they deadly? Yes or no? Okay. If you say yes, they are deadly, then how did Apollo and all the astronauts make round trips, round trips, six, six different round trips, I think, uh, with aluminum shielding, aluminum and plastic, which cannot stop radiation. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's still five of them walking around today. And if you say, well, it isn't deadly, then I point you to a NASA.gov video, which is called Orion Trial by Fire, where they talk about their Mars program in the end of 2014. And they said, no, the Van Allen belts are so deadly that we aren't even going to test manned capsules because we haven't solved the radiation problem. And it's like, well, what do you mean? You, you solved it in the 1960s. You solved it perfectly. You solved it with the capsules. You solved it with the spacesuits. You have no problem whatsoever. Why are you saying you can't solve it now? And I thought that was very interesting. Again, that's a NASA thing. So between those five points uh, that I threw at a Georgetown astrophysicist uh, earlier in 2018, he, he folded. He was like, nope, not going to answer him. That's it. The debate's over. And he walked away. All right. Uh, yeah, so... One point you made that I thought was very interesting is you, you said that it's not necessarily a belief that the Earth is flat, but a disbelief that the Earth is round. Right. And by the way, round, just so you know, just so you clarify here, round. Also, look, your, your dinner plate is round. Your dining room table is round. There's pizzas are round. What we're talking sphere. about here is a ball, a sphere, and a globe. And, and I know it's not your fault, but media does this all the time. And that says, you're saying that it's, it's not round? It's like, well, technically round can also be two-dimensional. I don't think we're splitting hairs here. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I just wanted a clarification on that point. So. Oh, okay. so, so what I'm saying is, is that everybody that looks at Flat Earth immediately tries to prove the globe, like I did. And they'll go to the space agencies right away. And they'll say, well, NASA and uh, the European Space Agency and JAXA and the India program and so on and so on and so on. And they try to look at images. And then I come back and I say, well, throw that out for a second. How do you know the Earth is a globe without using NASA? And then it gets trickier. And they say, why would we throw that out? I go, well, because NASA didn't invent the globe. Technically, the globe was out there for 500 years before NASA came along. Na NASA wasn't even founded until 1958, didn't even take the first image until 1972. So how do you know it's a globe without using NASA? And one of the first things they'll come at is they'll say, uh, well, we see ships going over the There's only two arguments left at that point, which is like, okay, we see boats going over the horizon and the sticks and shadow argument, which is a whole other thing most people can't get their head around anyway. I say, yeah, boats are going over the horizon. Fantastic. Great. Ten years ago, I would have been right there with you. Boat goes over the horizon. We see it. It's gone. Looks like the mass is the last thing leaving. And now we can disprove that. Now that boat is gone. You cannot see it with your naked eye. You can't see it with binoculars. But with digital zoom, you can pull that boat perfectly back into frame. It's all there. And you let it go off again and it can pull it back in. It's all there. In fact, the only thing that's stopping us from looking extremely long distances, and I mean over 150 miles, which is ridiculous, uh, is the thickness of the atmosphere itself. You to remember what we're breathing in here between me and you uh, is a thin version of water. You know, it's not just, you know, we, we think of, oh, it's just transparent. No, it's 99% transparent. Uh, if water is H2O, we are breathing in N4O. So, anyway, there you go. How's that? All right. Yeah, that was pretty good. Thanks. Uh, yeah, that's most of the questions. That's that, it? That's all you had? Uh, well, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, no, not necessarily. But, I mean, you can, it's your your time whatever whatever you have on your on your mind whatever, whatever um, you any personal questions or or just you know what any filler questions how's that okay so like there's a lot of people who believe in the round earth and they just necessarily think one thing about people who believe in the flat earth and there's all these stereotypes do you think there's any stereotypes in the flat earth community about people who don't believe the earth is flat 
Does it go both ways? No, no, and here's why. And it's something people ask me because I've done I don't know, so many interviews at this point, and they say, "Why don't you get mad?" You know, because you, how we're talking is very civil and very nice. Thank you for that. But I get a lot of hostile interviews as well. And people say, why don't you get mad at, at anyone that's coming across from you? I go, because I used to be them. You'd remember that only four years ago, if you would have asked me about the flat earth, I would have laughed you out of the room. And I was, I was considered myself a, a pretty strong conspiracy guy in that I, you know, I have an opinion. I don't believe in a lot of them, but I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. And yet, and everybody says this, and that is, in fact, uh, I, I joked about it in the clues if you watched it, which was, seriously, I, I know guys that believe <clears throat> that every member of the royal family is a lizard person. Seriously, they, they absolutely believe that. And yet I even bring up Flat Earth to them and they go, get the hell out of here. You know, this is like they don't want to even talk about it, which is interesting. It's like because it's the ultimate open minded thing. It's that big. So everybody out there. And again, it doesn't matter whether you're uh, what, how rich, how powerful, how beautiful, how talented you are. Flat Earth doesn't care about uh, gender or race or religious preference or even age w the story because it's a good story people love a good story and it's so interesting that it gets everywhere so for me it's just a matter of time uh, before you know before we I was talking to you we were talking to a whole bunch of other people um, the documentary didn't you know wasn't supposed to do well you know, it wasn't you know, most documentaries don't even get made. Uh, there were three thousand submissions to like to the first fe film festival we went to, and out of that, they chose one hundred, and we got into it, and then we got into the top ten of movies you must watch, and, and it's like, well, oh, fine, you got into film festivals, it's never going to sell. You're never going to sell it to uh, iTunes or, or Amazon, and then it sold immediately, and then it's like, well, you're never selling to Netflix, no, you sold to Netflix. So it's an interesting story that. Again, I don't mind if people uh, we when I look at you, know, you may not believe in flat earth. The people next to you may not believe in flat earth. That's fine. Everybody says that in the beginning. Everybody. I hated flat earth. I hammered on this thing for nine months. The average the average turnaround time for a flat earther, if you're going to believe in it, is about two weeks now. There's so much content out there. So when we look at people that are that are kind of we look at them as potential. <laughs> More than anything, it's like because it, because we hear the same arguments over and over, and so it's like, oh, okay, you've got the gravity argument, or your ships going over the horizon, or NASA, or satellites, or wherever you want to pick. It's like we we've heard these time and time again. It's like, okay, so we're gonna you know counter with these moves, and then either you're going to just brace yourself against it. It's like, nope, I'm not even looking at them, or all of a sudden you'll start, you know it'll start turning in your head and honestly it turns what i tell people nowadays i say just plant the seed and walk away you know a lot of people when they get into flat earth they get so excited they want to convince people it's like oh no i gotta i can totally get this guy it's like no man just put the idea in his head and then let him come back to you naturally uh there's a certain absorption period so no i don't hate anybody that that comes at me and i've heard some some pretty pretty solid insults so far i mean you know the comment section is brutal but at the same time, I, I don't read the comment section either. Uh, most of the time, because they're just anonymous trolls. Uh, if the real trolls, they will email you directly. And that almost never, ever happens. And, you know, the, the phone calls, pff, the only troll calls I ever get are people that are drunk. <laughs> That's about it. So, anyway, sorry, long-winded answer to that one. Uh, all right. Yeah, the purpose of this interview was we were trying to just get, like your your story your perspective on this whole issue and yeah you've given us a lot of good information cool. uh yeah i think we've done a pretty good job of that yeah. uh i don't have anything else to ask is there anyone else that you need to talk to in the community about this i mean are there are there people you're looking at or is this some, just something quick and dirty you're gonna you know just crank out uh don't. i mean more people to talk to probably would be better yeah but it's not like a necessity, I wouldn't say. All right. Well, if you if you want, I will. I'll shoot. Was it Mara? I was initially in contact with. Uh, yes, Mara. Okay. I, I will shoot her a few contacts. Uh, there's different people from the conference, different people from the documentary, that if you were curious about, they they are more than the one thing about the Flat Earth community is they're more than happy to talk to anybody. Uh, it just you know they get a little gun shy around just mainstream media nowadays because. You know, we get shredded from time to time because they, you know, they will, they will come at us, but more than happy to talk to you. 
All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your time. Hey, thank uh, you. If yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. I'm going to end the call now. Okay. If you need anything else, just let me know, okay? All right. Uh, actually, the audio recording you're taking, if oh, yeah, you could... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as, as, soon as to... we disconnect, it will compile, and I will drop it in here in probably 60 seconds. All right. Yeah. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.